You know what that was? No. That was a theme song from I Was a Teenage Werewolf. You could have fooled me. Now, do you know what this is? No. This is the sixth show of the series of the brand new radio series. From Hollywood, we present the Sam Freeberg Show. With the music of Billy May. Plus the songs of Peggy Taylor with Dawes Butler, June Foray, Peter Leeds, and the Judd Conlon Rhythm Airs. No use to look for us on TV, because in case you did not know, we're being brought to you once, brought to you once, brought to you on R-A-D-I. Oh. Well, this was the night we were going to bring you tap dancing around the world, but due to a jurisdictional dispute between the four stepbrothers and Mrs. Arthur Murray, uh, <laughs> it'll have to be postponed a bit. But it's great to be with you tonight. We have a... Uh, special... Pardon me, Mr. Freeberg, but my name is Tweedley. Well, we all have our problems. <laughs> I am the censor from the Citizens Radio Committee, and... Uh... I feel... You, uh, from the Citizens Radio Committee, you say? It's exactly what I said, yes. And what, I, is, what is your purpose in being here? I must okay all the material used on your program here. And I think the best method is to just sit back here and interrupt when I feel it's necessary. You mean you plan to stop me every time I do something that you think is wrong? Exactly. I'll just sound my little horn like this. <laughs> And then you stop, and I'll tell you what's wrong. Uh, somehow I can tell this is going to be one of those days. <laughs> you just go right ahead, Mr. Freeberg. Don't mind me. Yeah. Now I'd like to say... <laughs> you forgot to say thank you, Mr. Freeberg. Politeness is an essential in radio programming. Your program goes into the home. We must be a good influence on children. I see. Uh, well, uh, that's a nice little horn you have there. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much, Mr. Tweedley. You're welcome, I'm sure. I'd like to sing a Old River song in honor this week of National Mississippi Riverboat Paddle Wheel Week. <laughs> Mr. May, if you please. Very polite, Mr. Freeman. Thank you. Old Man River, that old... <laughs> All right, Tweedley, politeness I dig, but what in the world is wrong with old man river? The word old has a connotation some of the more elderly people find distasteful. I would suggest you make the substitution, please. I suppose you insist? Precisely. You may continue. Okay, music. You forgot to say, say thank, thank you. you. Yes, okay. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Tweedley. You're quite welcome, I am sure. Elderly man, river, that elderly man, river, he must know something, but he don't say nothing. All right, hold it, fellas. Now what, Tweedley? The word something, you left off the G. <laughs> but that's authentic. Something, something. Uh, that's the way the people uh, I'm sorry. talk uh, down there. What? The home is a classroom, Mr. Freeberg. I know you said that. Keep in mind the tiny tots. And furthermore, think back. You'll recall that you said, but he don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. That was in quotes. Now, really, Mr. Freeberg, that's a double negative. Do you mean he does say something? No, I just wasn't using my head, I guess. <laughs> I mean, after all, it should be grammatically correct, keeping in mind... And the tiny tots, yes. You probably mean he doesn't say anything. I, I, I suppose I mean that, yes, I guess. <laughs> All right, uh, fine, you win. All right, Billy, music. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome, I'm sure. Elderly man, river, that elderly man, river, he must know something, but he doesn't say anything. He just keeps rolling, rolling. He just keeps rolling along. Don't, doesn't plant taters, potatoes, he doesn't plant cotton, 
And them, these, those that plant them are soon forgotten. But elderly man river, it just keeps rolling along. Excellent. Tiny tots again, was it? Exactly. <laughs> Sorry about that. Here we go. You and I, we sweat, perspire, and pray. Bodies all waking and wrecked with pain. Oh, we got by that one. Hold that part. Lift that bill. Get off that boat. Take your finger off the button, Mr. Tweedley. <laughs> we know when we're licked. Well, that concludes Elderly Man River. Now turning to uh, the uh, sports page here. Oh, yes, and thank you for being with us, Mr. Tweedley. You're welcome, I am sure. <laughs> Once more, we present Mr. Robert E. Tainter, the man who looks for the dirty linen in the history hamper. And here he is, Bob Tainter. Uh, thanks. Uh, when did you get out, Bob? This morning. Uh, I thought you were doing 30 days. I was. But I got in touch with a friend of mine in the DA's office. He's a big wheel, Stan. A big wheel. Pretty big, huh? Yes, he might do you some good sometime. Well, I don't think that's going to be necessary. <laughs> you never can tell, Stan. <laughs> yeah. Well, how did he uh, get you out? Well, uh, you know the confidential magazine trial? Mm -hmm. A lot of movie stars are suing the magazine for libel. Yeah, there's some pretty unpleasant testimony there. Yeah. Confidential figures on laying it on the stars, pretty good, Stan. I know. Well, what I told this wheel was, why don't I see what I can get on the folks over at Confidential? <laughs> he, uh, went for it. I think it's kind of a cute switch myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a darling idea. Uh, what item of soiled linen have you dug out of the history hamper for us tonight? Well, it's a scorcher, Stan. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> Did you ever hear of Giacomo... Casabianca? Yeah, wasn't he on the Ed Sullivan show? No, that's another Giacomo Casabianca. The guy I'm talking about was a boy in history. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the linen stand. My good friend, Ertwing Somber, will fill you in. Wait a minute, you mean the Ertwing Somber is a good friend of yours? Oh, I got a lot on this cookie stand. <laughs> got a few minutes? I'll... Uh... No, no, let's just get on with it. Mr. Somber, if you please. Great moments in history. But what is the real story behind these moments? The time is August in the year of 1798. The event, the Battle of the Nile. The flagship of the fleet has blown up and caught fire. A young lad with jaws clenched stands on the bridge. All right, boy. The time is now. Go stand on the burning deck. First you give me the money. Then I'll stand on the burning deck. Oh, Bob Tainter, that was awful. I don't believe it. Each man has his own stool pigeon stand. Yeah, but that boy, Casabianca, was a hero. Well, so was my grandfather until he chickened out on Custer's last stand. <laughs> Let's get lost, will you, Bob? I want to introduce Peggy Taylor. Sure, Stan. No offense. Mm -hmm. Here she is, Peggy Taylor. <laughs> well, Peggy, I want the folks to know more about you, you know. Oh, well, like what, Stan? Well... No, in interviews, it's kind of standard practice to ask about hobbies. Hobbies? Yeah, that's right. Well, see, when I was a little girl, I raised rabbits. You mean you had the rabbits and they raised themselves? <laughs> yes. <laughs> More to the point. Yeah. Pardon me, Miss Taylor. 
Oh, yes, Mr. Tainer. Where did you get the rabbits? Well, they were given to me. It could be the old payola, you know, Stan. Oh, stop it, will well, you? My father gave them to me. There. Now you're satisfied? Sure, Stan. Maybe she had something on her father. <laughs> Just quit it, will you? Peggy wants to sing. Yeah? My friend at the DA's office will be glad to hear that. <laughs> so will a lot of people. Sing, will you please, Peggy? rock a your baby with a Dixie melody When you Croon a tune from the heart of Dixie. Hang that cradle, mammy mine, on that Mason Dixon line, and sing out from Virginia to Tennessee with all the love that's in ya. Weep no more, my lady. Sing that song again to me So soft and low Just as though you had me on your knee A million baby kisses I'll deliver The minute that you sing that Swanee River rock of your rock of baby With a Dixie melody rock a your baby With a Dixie melody When you croon, croon a tune From the heart of Dixie Hang that cradle, mammy mine On that Mason-Dixon line And sing out from Virginia Tennessee, with all the love that's in ya, weep no more, my lady, sing that song again to me, so soft and low, just as though you had me on your knee, a million baby kisses I'll deliver, the minute that you sing that song, Rock-a-bye, your rock-a-bye, baby, with a Dixie melody. Good evening. Our panel of experts are with us once again tonight. Mr. G.L. Spoon, Miss Edna St. Louis, Missouri, <laughs> and Dr. Linus Quartz. I'm your moderator, Fulbrook Mason. Now, to meet the panelists, first of all, Dr. Quartz, I believe you received your doctor's degree at MIT. Uh, what was your fee? <clears throat> I received my doctor's degree in Little Orphan Annie. <laughs> that was my major. Uh, my minor was Little Abner. Next, Miss Edna St. Louis, Missouri, who received her master's degree in Tarzan. Yes, the uh, subject of my thesis for my master's degree was Tarzan and the Apes and his uh, influence on the 20th century culture. Mm, all right. <laughs> yes. Now, our third panelist, G.L. Spoon, a roving reporter. And you covered the comic strips, didn't you? Uh, that's right. The funnies are my beat, yeah. And what school did you attend? Well, uh, I didn't attend any school as such. Uh, let's just say I'm from the school of hard knocks. That's not original, but it's very apt. I, I see. I uh, may not have any doctor's degrees like some other people around here, but uh, I'll go on the $64,000 question any time with my subject. And that is? Dick Tracy. <laughs> I don't see any reason to go around there with a chip on your shoulder, Mr. Spoon. Look, I haven't got any chip on my yeah, shoulder. You have a chip on your shoulder. It's I do not, obvious. I do not have a chip on my shoulder, Dr. Coy. I don't have to go to college to learn about Dick Tracy. Uh, gentlemen, 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 if you have anything to say, would you <laughs> please, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Raise now me? then, the first question today is sent in by a listener. It is... Uh, why doesn't Tarzan do as much swinging as he used to? <laughs> Dr. Coit, too old for it. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, Doctor. Tarzan's my subject. 
Furthermore, he's not too old. The man just... is too old. No, no, no. It's, it's just that his vines aren't so good as they used to be. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, I think we can dispense with that vine stuff, Miss Missouri. We all know that he uses ropes. Oh, wait a minute. He doesn't use ropes. I guess I ought to know. Yeah. Tarzan uses real genuine ropes. See? I, I mean, he uses vines. Well, look, hey, uh, vines, vines are ropes. The fact is, a 72-year-old man is not going to go swinging across the ravine. Oh, I know, sweetheart, you don't know. I know, I know. Wait a minute. Think of what people yeah, think. I don't uh, think little orphan Annie will ever see 45 again. Just yes. a <laughs> Wait, wait. Now, she's getting a little senile. I mean... I noticed that in her dialogue balloon. A little senile, eh? Yeah. Well, I uh, think the way she's handling those criminals in the canyon there it doesn't look like the work of an old lady, does it? Yeah. Oh, well, all right, Miss Hunter, let's let's. I don't uh, think that's an old lady. Uh, 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 we get on to the next. Whip those criminals. She's a nice old lady. Could we please uh, <laughs> have anything? The girl is eight years old. I know. I know. We, we get on to the next question. I think we have completed that question. She dyes her hair. She got a red wig. She dyes her hair. Oh, you're a real card tonight, aren't you? Yes, you know. That one. Mr. Spoon, did you? you have your hand up? I certainly did. In oh. fact, it went to sleep. Oh. <laughs> We're going to talk about criminals here. I think we should leave that to the Dick Tracy expert. Oh, that's it. That's a wonderful idea. All right, now here's our next question. Is Morin Plenty really guilty of the triple murder? Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Never mind that. It's they... dull stuff. Dull. What do you mean, dull? dull. <laughs> no, dull. dull. Let's talk about some of the orphan Annie characters. Punjab, for instance. Now there's a man. Oh, Punjab. Punjab. It sounds what? like a mystery. Phony, that Punjab. Could he drop a leopard with a four-inch letter opener? Listen, he just dropped his have... cloak over the leopard. Wait a minute. Oh, 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 I got my hand up. I got my hand up. One at a time. Look. I was not... You got your hand up. Go ahead. All right. I'll... Get on, get on. Listen, still asleep. Yeah, let me talk. I'll have to learn the language. I was under the impression we were talking about Dick Tracy. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Are we going to play the game? Yes. Yeah. Right, no, no, look. If Dick Tracy is such a world beater, how come he let Moore and Plenty's sister in law put a 38 caliber bullet in his skull? Yeah, how about now, how that? Come that? It was a 22 short, and it was just a flesh wound. It didn't actually enter the skull. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, shall, shall, shall we, you know, we just, skull. just a moment, shall we just stick to the question? It is the man. I, I, just, I just want your opinion. <laughs> that girl in this hippie dress shot him in the head, and yeah, I, uh, I just, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen I, uh, of the radio audience, these are the opinions of our panelists and <laughs> do not necessarily represent the opinions of CBS Radio and its affiliates. <laughs> now, the uh, question is, yes, well, I, uh, the question is now, is Morin Plenty guilty? Hmm? Miss Missouri? Guilty. Hmm. Dr. Coy? Not guilty. Mr. Spoon? I can't express my opinions on this because I may be called in as an expert witness at the time of the trial. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I guess we, we have a hung jury here tonight. <laughs> well, the, uh, the next question, I uh, subject, uh, is wardrobe. Wardrobe. Yes, wardrobe. Does or does not often any have more than one red dress? <laughs> Dr. Boyd's hand shot up. You're first. Ah, uh, yes. The man who has uh, received his doctor's degree... And little orphan Annie. Mm -hmm. You have got to keep rubbing that in, don't you? I'm not rubbing it in, sir. I'm merely stating a fact. I have a doctor. All right. Yeah, that is uh, a Dr. Boyd had his yep. hand, you know, up the uh, yeah. All right, yeah. When he was a little kid, he was a little fat, spoiled kid. I can tell the type. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, all right. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, he didn't mean that. I, may I please? Dr. I happen to know that Annie has a whole closet full of dresses. It's not the same dress. She changes them daily. Daily? Oh, please. <laughs> I can recognize the same dress day in and day out. Madam, they are different. They are different dresses. That is a fact. Take it from me. That's my subject. <laughs> she breaks them up with a nice little blue sweater and her chic belt and scarf every once in a while. <laughs> How does she break up those chic little white cotton stockings? Wait now, she hasn't changed those stockings in 25 years. <laughs> I, I take that as a personal affront, sir. A That's personal affront. I intended it as well. Even if it were the same pair of stockings, I think Annie would rinse them out every night. <laughs> it's so like her. It's so like her. Oh, so like her. <laughs> he rinses them out. Take it from me. I hope well, it. Well, Listen, madam, you should look that good in white cotton stockings. <laughs> Rinse or unrinse? <laughs> hey, uh, quite. 
Uh, Daddy Warbucks is a pretty wealthy guy, right? <laughs> Only one of the top billionaires in the world, that's all. <laughs> that's all. Well, then why doesn't he spring for a few bucks and get her a home permanent? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's you. Really look like a rat. A rat's nest, eh? Listen, madam, I noticed the Marcel has gone out of Tarzan's hair lately. Well, he's Are you a kidding? Uh, just, well, he's wearing a hairpiece. Just, just, what did what, you say? He's wearing a hairpiece. Uh, Tarzan was Tarzan wearing, wearing, wearing a hairpiece. Well, I suppose that crew cut the Dick Tracy affected as a derriere cree. Oh, no. Oh, look at this gal. You hit a man when he's down and wounded. He's he, up. He'll, he'll probably get amnesia. No, the man's back on his feet and uh, serves him right, the big jerk. <laughs> big jerk? That goes for Tarzan, too. Oh, no. Just oh, no, listen here, Dr. Oh, White you stocking. Know. You insulted him. Oh, and he's... Oh, it's time. Bring Sandy in, that's all. Get your ready up. That's the great animals of our time. Yes, it is. I'm very sure. And that's the museum. Yes, thank you, people. And that concludes another episode of our panel show, Face the Funnies. Now, it's good night to Mr. G.L. Spoon. If vandals kidnap you, look for fingerprints on or about your person. That's a crime stopper. <laughs> oh, indeed it is. And Dr. Linus Point? Yai. Arf, arf. Glorioski, it's been grand being here. <laughs> finally, Mrs. Edna St. Louis, Missouri. Me, panelist, you, not a <laughs> <laughs> And so it's good night until next week. Listen, man, I'm not a good thing. I'm not a good thing. So now for my next number, I'd like to uh, <laughs> sing a favorite. Is a favorite of mine, and I hope is a favorite of yours. <laughs> it's called the Rock Island Line, and it goes like this. Now, this here's a story about the Rock Island Line. Now, the Rock Island Line, she run down into New Orleans. And just outside of New Orleans, me, uh, there's a big me, toll a gate. Uh, pardon me. And all the train. Uh, pardon me. Yeah. Are you going to sing the song, or read it, or what? <laughs> well, I'm going to sing it, but uh, first of all, I always tell you of the story behind the Rock Island Line, sort of <laughs> sketching a little of the background, as it were. You are going to sing it, though. Yeah, I get to it. Well, let's get to it, then, eh? Okay. And all the trains that come through the toll gate... Why to get to pay the man some money? But of course, if you got certain things on board, yeah. Okay, you don't have to pay the man nothing. I mean, yeah. Okay with him? All right, all right. Let's okay. Step it right along there. Let's snap it up and snap it up. Okay. And just now we see a train. She's coming down the line. And she went get up to the toll gate. The driver, he shot down to the man. He say, I got pigs. I got horses. I got cows. Look, you I can got... skip all of that. He didn't let me name all the animals. Yes, I know, but we don't get, need he me, that. He didn't let me get to the sheep. Well, that doesn't make any difference. Well, it makes a difference to the sheep. <laughs> yes, I know, but let's I mean, get the no. train rhythm going and never mind the sheep. Okay, half the driver, he say, I got whole life stuck, I got whole life stuck, I got whole... Stone. And the man said, well, you okay, boy? You don't know me now. Let's go around three. Tell 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 I didn't mention the sheep. <laughs> I know, but let's skip the recitation. Well, I come to the best. Uh, let's get to the meat of yeah, the... I come to the best part now. I come to the part where the driver foo him. <laughs> Sing the song. Well, right? I think you ought to let me tell you how he fooled the toll gate driver with, just a, with the pig the iron. I mean, Will you just sing the well, song. Well, that's the payoff to the routine, you know. I mean, I get big reaction to it in clubs. Yeah, will you just sing the song, please? Well, okay. A lot, of, a lot of people waiting to see out a story. Will you just sing the song? Come out, you know. <laughs> will you just sing the well, song? Well, okay. You've been disappointed, that's all. I'll take the chance. Okay. 
Oh, when rock on in line, this is a mighty good road. Oh, when rock on... You sure you don't want the pig iron part? <laughs> okay. The line, here's the line to ride. Oh, the rock on in line, this is a mighty good road. Well, it's balls, right, I got right, I might find a good chick. That's it. Oh, rock on in line. Mumbles, mumbles, mumbles. What's this? Get your chickens at the station? Oh, get your ticket. Get your ticket at the station. Oh, get your ticket at the station. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to interrupt me, will you? <laughs> hey, B, C, W, X, Y, C. The cat's in the cupboard, buddy. Don't fool me. Hey, no, wait, 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 wait,